Hey everyone, I'm gonna to try to do a quick on the spot reaction to the new Gundam Call of Duty collab uh, because people are asking me what I think of it. And I'm gonna preface this with, I don't like Call of Duty and I'm only doing it because it's a Gundam thing and everyone cares what I have to say about Gundam things. Now, that being said, um, I guess I'll do a quick history of how this collab came about. Uh, this collab came about because it's Gundam and Gundam is uh, kind of famous for selling out. However, they have been a little bit slow into dipping their feet into the American market as far as like selling out over here goes. Like it's very, very common in Japan that you'll see like a Shars custom like Honda or a Shars custom box cutter. But only recently have we started getting like weird American Gundam products. And this is probably the most prolific weird American Gundam product we've gone in a long while. So yeah, I want to say about a month or so ago, some hackers who were like combing the Call of Duty launch files noticed that what had been added to the game was a cached animation of the dynamic kill from the first episode of Gundam, the one where the Zaku gets cut in half by the Gundam. Yeah, check that out. That's exactly it, one for one. And then shortly after that, they announced that, hey, guess what? There's a big Gundam collab coming. And they had this poster out. It was like a semi-animated poster that showed there would be a Japan map. I'm not sure if the Japan map is new or old. I don't play the game. And they showed the shadow of the Gundam. And everyone was like, oh, hell yeah, we're going to get a Gundam. And now Call of Duty is a game where, like, obviously you play as, like, humans shooting each other and, like, it's a person-to-person -person shooting game. Uh... I played it a little bit in college. It's just not my personal favorite shooting game. Like, I'd rather play, like, I don't know, Goldeneye or, like, Halo. Like, I feel like those, like, capture the essence of a shooting game better than Call of Duty does. Plus, also, whenever I played Call of Duty online, like, everyone who matched up with me was, like, freaking seven. And that, like, honestly, like, kills the game for me. Anyway, so back to the collab. So, yeah, I want to say, like, yesterday they finally fully announced what the collab was. And obviously it was just Gundam skins for your character players, but what's funny is that like looking at these skins, they are like cosplay level skins. Like to be honest, I thought you were just going to play as like a human sized Gundam and I would have been okay with that. But no, they straight up made like cosplay skins. Like these look exactly like the Gundam cosplayers you would see at like Anime Expo or hell like, oh, you know what this super reminds me of? Have you ever seen that video of like the Gundam snowboard team? There's like a snowboard team in Japan that like always goes out of their way to like cosplay as Gundams when they snowboard. Yo, yo, the Call of Duty skins are the Gundam snowboard team. It's like them to a T. Yeah, so anyway, they formally announced that there's going to be three skins you can get. Uh, obviously one is the original Gundam and yeah, it looks hella weird. It looks like it has like a bomb strapped to its waist. I'm not sure what that's about. And yeah, it's like a bad cosplay suit because you can see like the guy inside it. You can see like his arms and his legs poking out. That's kind of funny. It's got like a slightly different arm. I'm not sure what's up with the different arm. The different arm kind of reminds me of like a Pip-Boy from Fallout. Uh, it's got a riot shield because they obviously had to like graft the Gundam shield onto like the existing Call of Duty shield. Uh, it's got the beam saber. That's cool. And instead of the beam rifle, it has a kind of creepy looking, uh, real gun painted like a Gundam gun. I really don't like this. Uh, I've seen these kind of guns around. They just give me a bad vibe because I feel like making a real weapon looks like a toy encourages kids to play with real guns and hurt themselves. And that's another thing that's kind of controversial about this like collab. Like a lot of people feel like that Gundam is like an anti-war show that highlights like why war is bad, the tragedy of war, how children are exposed to war, how war traumatizes everyone involved. And now here we are in Call of Duty, a game that pretty much primarily exists as a propaganda arm of the US military to trick children into thinking the military is cool. So yeah, I don't know. Like there's a lot of mixed feelings about this all around. All right, moving on to some other skins. Um, there's also the Sharzaku skin. Once again, major, major man in a suit energy. Honestly, this like gives me some like real Tokusatsu Gundam vibes. Like I feel like this could be like a Tokusatsu Gundam movie made in the seventies, like to fight Godzilla. That would be funny. 
Not much to say about the Zaku, pretty much the same thing as the Gundam, but in the Zaku, I feel like the man in the suit is even more visible. You can see like a lot of the man in the suit. I'm kind of surprised they didn't give it like the typical Zaku uh, vest armor. And then it's got like, again, weird, weird extra shit. It's got like a fanny pack. Why does the Zaku have a fanny pack? What? What's up with that? Uh, it's got the typical Zaku heat hawk. That's cool. And it's got pretty much the same gun the Gundam had, except colored red. Uh, okay, it looks cool, but again, it still looks like a cosplayer in a suit. And last and weirdest of all, I guess for the female characters, they include an aerial Gundam skin. And yeah, this is not that different from the uh, male Gundam skin, but once again, there's some fanny packs on this one. It's got like the weird uh, waist armor again. Uh, you can kind of see the woman inside. So again, these are all just like people wearing funny Gundam costumes like it's Anime Expo. Um, you can see the gun in real detail on this picture. So I guess this is our best look at the gun. And the shield on this one looks nothing like the shield from the show. It's like straight up like an Acastia Academy shield, which um, I'm pretty sure the Ariel didn't have. Honestly, the shield almost reminds me of Saleta. It looks almost like a Saleta shield. That's kind of like where I'm thinking with it. But yeah, um, overall, like, um, I guess this collab doesn't impress me that much. I'm definitely not going to go out and buy Call of Duty for it, especially because I just don't think Call of Duty is fun in the first place. But yeah, these are some pretty weird skins. I mean, I guess they're fun if you do play Call of Duty. Like, if you like Gundam and you like Call of Duty, by all means, go out of your way to get these. But I don't know. It just feels to me like one of those bad Gundam tie-ins. Like, remember that G Fuel stuff that was giving everyone heart attacks? There was a Gundam version of that, too. But, like, yeah, I love Gundam, but I'm not going to, like, buy, like, a shitty product just because it's got Gundam on it. Um, overall, like, I think these skins are kind of funny, like, in a historical sense because they do look so much like cosplayers and so little like the actual Gundam. Like, when they showed, like, the Gundam Shadow, I thought it was going to just be, like, a little Gundam running around, but no, it's a fucking cosplayer, so that's pretty funny for me. Um, overall, I feel like if they're just going this weird cosplay route, I feel like I would prefer them to, like, start, like, adding, like, some pilot suits. Like, if they had, like, the basic Xeon and Federation pilot suits, or, like, maybe since they got, like, the area already, like, if you could play as Thaletta, that would be pretty fucking funny, I think. Uh, overall, this is just kind of like a weird, weird uh, collab. So let me know what you guys think of it. Um, are you going to get Call of Duty for this? If you already have Call of Duty, did this like make you happy? Let me know if you made you happy. Um, I overall just think it's kind of weird and funny. Um, by the way, since I have a few extra minutes to kill on this video, um, I'm going to be streaming Megaton Musashi most this week because I just got it and I think I love it. This game has like probably the most essence of Getter Robo I've ever seen in a video game. And then on top of that, it's got this really cool post-apocalyptic Neon Genesis Evangelion vibe. And the game actually seems like it's trying to make me angry to make me fight better, which is a very Getter Robo kind of thing. So I'm probably going to rage hard through this game, but I really want to beat the story. And I, for the love of God, want to unlock Getter Robo because you can actually play in Getter Robo in this game. And not only is this a game that's ostensibly based on Getter Robo, but the fact you can play as Getter Robo in it means that this is now the best Getter Robo video game since Getter Robo Daikessen on the PS1. So, like, this has been a long time, and I'm ready to, like, fucking rip into some aliens with some Getter Tomahawks right now. So, yeah, I'm going to be streaming that game, like, as much as possible this week. Um, if you catch me on stream, hit me up. I would love to talk to you. If you don't talk to me, I will just play the game and fill with rage as I try to find Getter Robo and the secret of Getter Energy. I hope the secret of Getter Energy is not bad because I need it to kill aliens. All right, that's about all for me, you guys. Um, yeah, catch me around. Um, I'll try to drop some review videos this week, too. I just saw Planet of the Apes, so uh, yeah, let me know if you want a monkey movie review. That might happen, too. All right, peace out. Later. Good night.